थ्री टू वन गो नमस्ते दिस इज माई थर्ड वीडियो क्लिपिंग वी आर स्टिल ऑन नेशनल इनकम अकाउंटिंग रिलेटेड टॉपिक्स सो टूडे इज टॉपिक ए सर्कल ऑफ फ्लो ऑफ इनकम फैक्टर इनकम एंड ट्रांसफर इनकम सो वी वुड लुक इन टू द बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ सर्कल ऑफ फ्लो ऑफ इनकम फैक्टर इनकम एंड ट्रांसफर इनकम बिकॉज दैट वुड हेल्प यू टू अंडरस्टैंड बिच ऑफ दिस वुड मेक अप योर डोमेस्टिक प्रोडक्ट और नेशनल प्रोडक्ट सो मूविंग ऑन टू सर्कल ऑफ फ्लो ऑफ इनकम वट इज सर्कल ऑफ फ्लो ऑफ इनकम सर्कल ऑफ फ्लो ऑफ इनकम इज द जेनरेशन ऑफ इनकम बाय द प्रोडक्शन यूनिट्स एंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ सच जेनरेटेड इनकम टू द हाउस होल्ड एंड फाइनली हाउ द हाउस होल्ड आर गोइंग टू डिस्पोज ऑफ दिस इनकम इन द फॉर्म ऑफ कंसम्शन एक्सपेंडिचर सो बेसिकली देर आर थ्री फेसेस ऑफ द सर्कल ऑफ फ्लो ऑफ इनकम द फर्स्ट फेस इज द जेनरेशन that is income generation and generation of products and services so basically if you take up a two sector model let's assume that you have the household sector and then the firm sector so the household sector they supply the factor services to the firms the firms are going to be engaged in generation of products and services and they also generate income which they have to provide back to the households so the households are going to supply the factor services to the firms factor services the four factors land labor capital and organization so these are the four factor services that are going to be provided by the households to the firms and the firms using up these factors will be engaged in the production activity will produce the products and services and as a reply to the factor services they provide the factor remuneration to the households back so there is one whole circle over here so you saw that the factor services are provided to the firms and then the firms they produce the products and as a reply to the factor services they provide the factor income so the factor services that is provided is going to be one physical flow of services from the household sector to the firm sector so that is called as a real flow what's a real flow real flow will be the flow of factor services from the households to the firm in reply what does the firm do the firm is going to remunerate the households in the form of factor payments land labor capital and organization flowing to the firm and the firm in return is going to provide wages and then it is going to provide rent rate of interest and profit that is the factor payment that is going to be given to the households by the firm so that would make up the money flow so money flow which is also called as a nominal flow it is going to provide the income that the household is going to require to dispose of so we see that the firm is generating the income it is also generating the products and other services so this income that is generated by the firm is going to be given to the households and what are the households going to do with that obviously they are going to spend their income on the products and services so the consumption in expenditure is going to be put up or the income is going to be disposed of so you understand there is this generation income and product generation stage which is the first stage of the circle of flow and then the second is distribution of the factor income and what are the firms doing 
the firms are going to dispose of the income in the form of consumption expenditure so the money reaches back the firms so you see that the circular flow is complete right so in this process of circular flow of income you have also understood the terms real flow and money flow so real flow it refers to movement of the factor services and also even as the firms are buying the products and services from the firms we see that the goods are going to move to the households so movement of services movement of goods between the two sectors namely the household sector and the firm sector will be considered as a real flow which is also called as a physical flow because we see that there is a physical movement of products from or physical movement of services from one sector to that of the other and as a result of this real flow there is an answering money flow you see that there is factor payments that is made in the form of money also the consumption expenditure that's going to be undertaken in the form of money so both these happen between the two sectors the household sector and the firm sector in terms of money is called as a money flow in other words that is also called as the nominal flow now it's for simplicity sake that we assume an economy could have a firm sector and a household sector in reality we don't know that there are more sectors in world so at higher levels there are three sector and four sectors but for cbsc class 12 it is the basic two sector model that you will be tested on so for your information the three sectors what are the three sectors and what are the four sectors engaged in this circular flow of income you have the household sector and then you have the firm sector in a two sector model so along with this if welfare has to be kept up if welfare has to be kept up in the economy naturally there is an interventionist body namely the government so you have the household sector the firm sector and the government sector in a three sector model and of course you always cannot have a closed economy any economy would have to depend upon the other economies it has to carry on trade and other relationships with the rest of the world so you have the external sector which is the fourth sector so the firm the households and then the government and then the external sector is what is involved in a four sector model but again for class 12 cbse you will have only the two sector model which is basically the household and the firm and how there is real and money flow engaged in between these two sectors right why circular flow why should you understand this concept of circular flow because that obviously tells you how the two sectors are going to be interdependent in the conduct of the economic activities production consumption exchange capital formation so you see that the basic economic activities for conduct of the basic economic activities the sectors have to be totally interdependent so first thing the circular flow of income tells you how the sectors remain interdependent number 2 it also tells you about the equilibrium and the disequilibrium that could arise in the circular flow how they could be leakages and how the leakage should be plugged in order to keep this circular flow intact how the leakage should be plugged with an injection you would understand so what is this equilibrium what is this equilibrium ideally say whatever income is going to be received by the households should be disposed of in the form of consumption expenditure that is y should be equal to c the entire income should be disposed of but we see that in real life that doesn't happen now there is this you know small Uh, safety security reason saving up uh, for the future staring the current consumption all that that's hap happening in real world 
where the population ends up saving a small bit. So when the entire income is not going to be spent on consumption, when a part of it is going to be kept aside as saving, what happens is the circle of flow. The circle of flow gets disrupted because some amount of money leaks out of this flow. That's a leakage. So saving over there is a leakage. What do you do with this? Because to that extent of the leakage, the circle of flow shrinks. So in order to maintain this circle of flow, there has to be an injection now. How do you do that? Yeah. When you save up the money, are you going to put it in earthen pots? No. Obviously, as smart people, the economy, they tries to save it up with the financial institutions, capital market, money market. What do they in turn do? The saving will in turn be converted into an investment and it will be provided back to the production units. So if the income is not equal to consumption, then the saving should be equal to the investment. Saving, which is a leakage from the circular flow, has to be introduced back in the form of an investment. So investment, it becomes an injection now. Yeah. So the leakage should be equal to the injection now so that the circular flow remains intact. Right? So will the economy now stay at the same level? You mean to say that uh, the money goes round, 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 goods and services go round, round, round and, and there's no development, there's no growth? No, of course. There will be development, there will be growth. So maybe in the next chapter, an income and employment unit, you will understand how there is going to be a greater development and growth that is going to be triggered off and how the economy forges forth. Now, back to the circular flow concept, what you have understood is how the sectors are interdependent, how they can be an equilibrium of income and consumption expenditure. If not, if there is going to be a disequilibrium, if there is going to be a leakage and how there has to be an injection which is going to maintain your circle of flow intact and at last you understand the level of economic activity that happens in a particular nation. How much of production is happening, how much of consumption is happening, how much of income is generated and what is the amount of money that is circulating in the economy as a result of this production process. That's what you understand. So the level of economic activity, the amount of production within the domestic territory, namely your domestic product, your national income. So such concepts you try and understand through this circular flow. So that's the idea of learning circular flow of income as part of class 12 macro. Now there are two more types of incomes that you will have to understand because you need to account for your domestic product and the national product as part of your national income accounting. So you have factor income and you have transfer income concepts. So what is factor income? I think in circular flow itself, you've understood that there is this real flow and money flow and so on. The you know factors of production, they supply the households supply the factors of production to the firms and in return they receive the factor remuneration that's exactly your factor income so the factor remuneration that is provided by the firms to the households yeah, in the form of wages and rent and rate of interest and uh, profit is going to be your factor income so this would very much be included as part of your national income calculation under one particular method. So basically you have three methods of calculating your national income. You have your income method, you have your value added method and then you have your expenditure method. So under the income method, if you sum up all the factor income, you will arrive at the domestic product. Yeah. So that's the basic information I can give you right now. So factor income, coming back to that concept, factor income is supposed to be the 
factor remuneration that is provided to the households in reply for the factor services which the firm procures from the household. So factor income concept is very much a earning concept. The households they earn their money. They provide the service and they earn the money. So it's an earning concept. Factor income is an earning concept. Yeah. And you've already understood that it is going to be included as part of your national income or domestic income calculation. So what is this transfer income then? Transfer income is an income that is received by both the population and the government. So if the population is going to receive some income, if the government is going to receive some income, for what? For not any productive activity. So it is going to be the income that is received by the government and by the population without rendering any productive service. So unlike your factor remuneration which is received because of providing the factor service, transfer income is an income which is going to be received by the government or by the population without rendering any productive service. Yeah. So they simply received. So it's only the receipt concept. There is no generation of products and services. There is no productive activity taking place here. So if you take up the concept of transfer income, it's only a receipt concept. And what are the examples? You have understood that for factor income, the factor payment could be the examples. For transfer payment, if the government is going to receive the income, then yeah, I, I can hear you say that it's going to be the taxation. Yes. Taxes, the various taxes that the government collects. Yeah, that's going to be one kind of transfer, a one-sided transfer. Do we all pay taxes to the government because uh, the government gives us something in return? No. Yeah, it, it's a mandatory payment that the population has to make to the government. And it's just one-sided, nothing in return. Right? And what does the government do with this? The government is going to provide payment to few people in the form of say unemployment benefit fund, old age pension, subsidies to production units to keep up the welfare of the population. So all such payments that the government is going to make to the population to maintain welfare, again it's one sided. Old age pension, do they get something from the old people? To keep up the welfare of the population, it's going to be provided to the population. Again, unemployment benefit fund, subsidy to the firm. These are all monetary support that the government is going to offer to the population to keep up welfare. So there again, it's all one-sided. So transfer payments, they are called as unilateral payments. That is one-sided payments. None of these, none of these will be included as part of your domestic income or national income calculation. It would be only the factor income which would be included in the national income or domestic income calculation and not your transfer payments.